Hi, it's John Krams with Consum Press, and this video tutorial is going to focus on uh, game setup and specifically uh, setting up your U-boat display mat and getting it prepared for your very first patrol assignment. And we'll actually refer to the rules here just a little bit to show you what we're going to be covering. So if you go to section 4.0 of your rules, uh, where you have whether you have them printed out or you have the PDF like I do here, uh, we're going to go through game setup. And as you can see here, it starts with a U-boat uh, model selection that takes place, uh, which will also tell us uh, what the start date will be. Uh, for our first patrol assignment. We'll have some preparation work to do for our log sheet. And then just continuing on to the uh, next section here, which actually covers the U-boat display mat itself. Um, and you can see we actually have an illustration of what it, a typical display will look like at time of setup. Uh, we also focus in on, okay, how do I set up my initial torpedo load, for example? And reading further, besides torpedo load, you also have some uh, ammo markers or ammo rounds that need to be uh, set up as well. So again, this is all covered in the rules, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let me go ahead, I'm just going to zoom in here so we can see this a little bit better. And as you can see from the display mat that we're uh, showing right now, I've gone ahead and I've selected the Type 7C uh, U-boat. So just a few quick things about it uh, for start of the game is, okay, we need to select our model. We've done that. Next step is what's our start date? Well, as you can see here, it's October of 1940. So you'd need to just note this for your log sheet, um, for your, your wrote log sheet, that when you begin your first patrol, you're going to enter your first patrol assignment. Um, on that line, course, on that row corresponding to October of 1940. And if you look at the specific U-boat marker itself, which we have right here, um, I'll zoom in so you can see it a little bit better here. We have our Type C um, U-boat. Again, this October 40 is the start date, so you can see the date's also listed here on the marker. And since we're just setting up for play for our first assignment, our U-boat is currently in port, getting ready to start its first maiden voyage. So let's return to the header section and let's see what else we can do for initial setup. Well, uh, there is one section that talks about the initial uh, commandant rank, or, or that's German for uh, captain rank. And uh, for October 40, there's actually two possible options for your starting rank. So I'm going to scroll the roll booklet here uh, just so we can get to that section. Actually, I'm going to go to the <laughs> last page because I know there's a table on the last page that just basically covers it for us. So let's just cut to the chase to the back page. And there is a, uh, a simple table for case 11.2.2, .2, which is determine your starting rank. We know we're October of 1940 because that's when the Type uh, 7C model has its first uh, patrol. And we're going to do a quick die roll to see what rank we're going to start at. So a uh, die roll on a D6 of 1 to 2, it, you start at uh, Oberleutnant, which is the lowest rank, which is rank 1 out of 5, or uh, Capitaine Lieutenant, which is um, the second highest rank, up to a total of 5 ranks, uh, if you roll a 3 through 6. So you have a better chance of rolling a 3 through 6. So let's assume we did that. Let's assume we rolled a single die and we came out with, we rolled a three or greater. So we're going to take on that uh, rank that's second highest out of five possible ranks. So to show that on the U-boat display mat, uh, we're going to come back to that here. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my rank marker right here. Now, one thing you'll notice, it's a little different than the counters that you have. We did a late change to the counters in production, and that little number at the bottom, which is that uh, official rank number uh, for the commandant, is a 2. That's actually going to be positioned up to the side uh, where, where the, uh, name, where the uh, rank name is. So um, that was to avoid any potential misalignment with counters where the number would get cut off on the counter sheet. So uh, your counter will look a little bit different, but it's going to be the number 2 rank counter which is what we we rolled for so we're gonna we're gonna note that uh, next thing we have here is medals and rewards well we know we don't have any yet because we're just starting the game so no knights cross uh, crew quality we know uh, it's in the rules that your crew quality you always start the game uh, at a level of trained uh, that's the second highest level out of four possible so you start at a trained level and we don't have any random events yet because we haven't gone out on any patrols yet. So there's been no chance for any uh, random events to happen. So uh, that means that space will be left empty. Now before I get into the armaments, uh, especially for the torpedoes, let me go ahead and uh, 
see what other markers I can place. Uh, well, we know we're going to be tracking, or we, well, hopefully not, but we do want to track hole and flooding damage as it occurs. So no damage has occurred yet, but if it does occur, let's put those uh, hole and flooding markers and set that aside right next to the tracks. So um, we don't actually move these markers into any of these spaces until that first damage or hit happens. So it hasn't happened yet. So we're not going to have these markers on the first square yet. They're going to be outside the, the uh, those two rows or swim lanes. So they're just set aside basically and they're not being used yet. Uh, let's see what else we can quickly uh, put on the U-boat display mat for game setup. Well, let's talk about deck guns for a second. We've got some ammo rounds here. We've got a total capacity of ammo of 10 rounds. Basically, you can do up to two rounds of uh, you can do up to two ammo rounds per per combat round. So we've got some numbered com uh, ammo markers here for rounds. So actually, you get fire up to two rounds for a combat phase. If you do some odd numbers, just one instead of two, we've got those numbered there as well. So we need to have our ten uh, ammo round. We need to have a total of ten in this uh, space to equal our total capacity. So let me just go ahead and place those there. So we've got our 10 ammo round markers. Great. So that's all been placed already. We're all good. Uh, next thing we're going to do is, um, well, we don't have to worry about any other ammo round markers because the flat guns have unlimited uh, ammunition. So we're not going to have to worry about that. If you're wondering what the space is for, then, well, it's for status. You see, we got the status for the deck gun. We've got also a space for the status of the flat gun. Well, they can take damage and become inoperable during play. So you would actually place a damage marker on there, but we're starting the game, so we don't have to worry about it. Guess what? We're almost done. Uh, we're basically at the stage now. We're going to decide what our torpedo load's going to be, uh, or what our mix of torpedoes will be for our Type 7C. If you look here in the header section, which is quite important, We've got a torpedo load of 14 torpedoes are going to be on the U-boat. We then show what is between the two torpedo types. One is the G7A steam torpedoes, and you can have uh, you can start with eight. And the G7E or electric uh, torpedo type, you would start with six. This is your initial mix, eight and six. So if I was going to go place the 14 markers, uh, that would be my default mix. And I'm going to go ahead and just follow that guidance for now. So I'm going to place, load up my four uh, torpedo tubes with steams. And I'm going to do the same for my aft torpedo. And so that's one, two, three, four, five so far. I can have eight total. So let me just put in now the reloads area. So as I fire torpedoes, um, fire any salvos, I would then later be able to reload and move these up into these spaces uh, once they become empty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and have my uh, final uh, or up to eight markers for steam. And notice we have G7A as a label in this box so you can easily separate uh, your steams from your electric torpedo types. I can have now my six. Um, can have my six electrics now that it says on the chart. So there's one, which means the last uh, five will have to go in here in the reloads uh, box. So that should give us. That should match the total capacity um, of what we can have um, in in the display mat. So let's double check this. So if we count real quickly, we've got uh, five, six, seven, eight steam total. And I've got one plus five reload, six electric, so that matches the uh, that mix, which totals 14. So it's 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 great. We're all set. But please notice there's some small type, uh, italicized type that says you can now adjust your torpedo mix by three in either direction, meaning I can add or add more steams or add more electrics and just sort of counterbalance that out. So I can basically change my balance of torpedoes up to three in any one direction. So, um, but before I do that, there's one very important rule that we have. It's, it's, it's an optional rule per se, but it's, it, we really consider it, consider it a vital rule that we recommend everybody follow. So it's the one optional rule that we have actually, um, in the body of the rules, you'll find in the body of the rules, and that's the initial torpedo load restrictions, case 4.5.2. So let's go to 452, and let's follow what it says, just so we can go ahead, and we're going to follow the guidance for uh, our initial torpedo load restrictions. So basically, the historical note is the electric torpedo types required regular maintenance, so they were never already like preloaded um, in the Tor torpedo tubes, or, or they weren't just carried uh, in external ca containers on the deck because they always have to be maintained and worked on. So basically what the uh, official guidance of what the rule is here, 
to add some historicity to the gameplay is if you note here it says um, first of all all your forward and after torpedo tubes must, must start loaded with the G7A steam torpedo type that's one thing so fine uh, I think we've actually already done that we'll double check that in a second but it says here furthermore there's a, a maximum limit to how many of those electric torpedo types you can have so for type 7 U-boats you can have up to 5 uh, G7E electrics and for the type uh, C9 uh, U-boats, you can have a maximum of six. So we're going to use this rule. We're definitely going to use this rule. So if we go back here, uh, we see we've already adhered to the first sentence of that special uh, rule, which is basically they all have to be steam in the torpedo tubes. We've done that. So the only thing we have left is we do not want to exceed um, five torpedoes as electric that is the maximum we can have right now we see that we have six we have one in the reload area there and we have five here but let's notice this we are we can adjust our total mix by three so i can actually if i wanted to max out on steam torpedoes which i'm actually going to do now as an example i can go from eight to uh, eight plus three is eleven so i can have eleven steam which will leave me with three electrics, which is below that five max. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out some markers now, and I'm going to make sure I have 11 steam torpedoes in the end, or just three electric, um, basically. Three electrics will be my uh, end result. So we're going to have 11 steam here. So I think we have that now because I'm looking here as my one little hint here. My Ford Reloads has a capacity of eight, and I know I have eight here already, so I know basically everything is filled out uh, perfectly here. I've got my three G7Es, uh, which can basically at any point in time get loaded in any vac you know, vacated spot here during a patrol assignment. So we've got our starting three, which is fine. That's in that as far as the uh, mix adjustment, we can do that. And we're going to have our uh, our 11 steam. So we have our five reloads here for forward. We have our one aft, and then we have our five in our torpedo tubes. So basically, uh, believe it or not, we are set to play. We are good to go um, to start the game. So we would be basically moving on, which would be can, which would be determining our very first patrol assignment for October of 1940. So I hope this gave you a quick and good overview of uh, how you would set up your U-boat uh, display, Matt. Um, notice. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of markers really placed on the U-boat mat anywhere else. That's because these other sections are tracking uh, potential damage to systems or, or a crew injury or uh, perhaps special abilities for the crew through promotion, which we just haven't ha hasn't happened yet, obviously, because we haven't started yet. So basically what will happen is to start the game, we're going to find out what our patrol assignment's going to be, and that's going to tell us where our U-boat's going to start out. So if I roll a British Isles to start, I would go in this first box and do my first encounter check roll for that first transit box. But this right here is our actual uh, setup to start play of the game. So again, I hope you found this helpful, and uh, we'll again cover more details about actually conducting a patrol assignment, checking for counters. We'll uh, include some video tutorials on that as well. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.